Hi everybody! Today I'm going to talk about filling and creating fillers. Fillers are horses that are used for filling competitions and what that means is whenever you sometimes are bluffing or you might be skilling or something like that and you're trying to win competitions, one of the techniques that's used is filling and it's where you put horses that are similar in skill to the horse that you want to win the competition are. So you would enter those into the competition with the blop, for example, and the filler horses are, you know, basically need to play a second, third, fourth, or fifth, but you don't want them to win. You want the blop or the horse that you're looking to get wins on to win, and you want the filler to lose to them purposefully. So you can enter, if you're the person entering the blop into a competition, obviously, you can only enter one more horse because every player is limited to entering two horses from their own account. So you can ask friends to enter fillers as well into your competitions or if you're lucky enough that you have shared to your friends and they're happy to let you use their fillers, then you can do that as well. So that's a couple of the ways you can use them. Now I'm, I've got a large amount of unsorted fillers here and I'm going to kind of explain to you how you might train them up. For example, if you've been collecting horses that you want to use for this. So I'm just going to pick this one for this demonstration and so this is my this is my filler horse here now some people like to keep the health and the morale low of fillers because health and morale impact how you do in competitions so having fillers that have low health and morale sometimes makes it easier for them to lose to blops the only disadvantage with that is you can do less competitions usually because it requires more energy when your horse is low on morale or health. So this particular filler here is a classical filler. Now as I have explained in some of my blopping videos and some of the other ones that I've done, different competitions have primary, well different competitions have different primary skills and they also have secondary skills. and. If you're not too sure what I mean by that, I'll just quickly go to my office to explain this. So, I have it down here. Okay, so this is the competitions, right? The skill in brackets affects the level of the competition. For example, if you had a horse with 50 skills and speed, it would most likely be able to compete at around 50% difficulty in barrel competitions. Well, how do I know that? Well, for example, Western competitions, the primary skill is speed. And the two secondaries are gallop and stamina. And this is the same across all competitions, but all of them have a different primary. And then they have two secondaries. So for barrel, of course, it's speed is the primary, cutting it's stamina, reining is gallop, trail is dressage, western pleasure is trot. And then the other skills, they're also listed here, so you can see them. So, stamina, gallop are the secondaries for that one. Dressage and speed are the secondaries of cutting. Dressage and stamina are the secondaries of reining. Trail is the sec or sorry, trail competitions. Trot and jumping are the secondary secondaries. And for western pleasure, it is stamina and dressage, which are the secondaries. So you can see this again with classical we've got here. Uh, cross country is stamina is the primary, dressage is dressage, gallop is gallop, trot is trot, and jump, show jumping is jump, and then you can see the secondaries are there as well. So now, if you're probably wondering right now, okay, well, it's all very well you've got this written down, but what if I don't know which of the secondaries and how can I find out? Well, it's quite a simple way to do that. Click on the horse that you. We'll go back to this one. Click on the horse that you're going to use for your filling. For example, I'm just going to age this once. Okay. This is a classical one. I'm going to click on cross country, for example. And up here at the top, no matter what competitions you go into, as long as it's not an auto competitions, okay? As long as you have it on a uh, manual, you will get this box up here. And the box will display three skills and then an energy requirement, or sorry, the current energy of your horse. So 
whatever skill is at the top here, that's the primary, okay, of the competition. And the two afterwards are the secondaries. So if I go into trot competitions, as you can see there, trot is the primary and there's the two secondaries. If I go into gallop, there's the primary and those are the two secondaries. Now this is the same horse that I'm clicking on. So there's the primary and there are the secondaries. And once again, there's the primary and those are the two secondaries. Now it will obviously, it's the same, it's the exact same with Western. If you go into the Western competitions and you click on those individually, you'll also be able to see them and this doesn't change, okay? So the next thing that I want to explain is the, how the primary skill is important. With a filler, you want a filler to be able to go in the same competitions as perhaps your blop, for example. So if I had a blop that had, just say for example, 103 skills in stamina or something cl quite close to that. I'd want to find a filler that's roughly the same in stamina skills, for example, if I was going into cross country because there's the primary skill. But I might want the filler to be lower in the secondaries. And the reason for this is, okay, the secondaries have less effect than the primary, but the reason the primary is so important and the reason you want the filler to have a similar amount of primary skills to your blop is because the primary affects the difficulty of the competition. So as you can see, I've got 103.56 skills and stamina on this horse. And the difficulty is around that. Okay, so there's 102. And there's some underneath that. There's some that will be lower, okay? And it's some competitions that might be above it. Just maybe you might be able to see 104, for example, or a wee bit higher. But usually it's below it or on the dot. So that means I could enter competitions around that difficulty. So that's why the primary skill is so important. You want fillers that are quite similar in their primary skill to whatever particular competition you decide to put your blop in. So obviously uh, if you were doing, you decided you wanted to go into trot and win some competitions, then you're gonna need a filler that is similar in primary skill which is obviously trot for trot competition. So I'll just pop over to trot competitions here. So it's the same filler that I had from earlier. So there's the trot. Now, as you can see, I mentioned that there's the primary and there's the two secondaries. As you can see, there's three other skills. Now, all horses have six skills, but you can see there's three that aren't there. Okay, and that's the same across all competition. That's because those skills have absolutely no effect on the outcome of the competition. So your horse, so this particular filler, for example, could have, this is just hypothetical, I know it actually doesn't, but imagine this horse had 600 gallop skills, okay? And I decided to use it as a filler in trot competitions. That would be absolutely fine because the gallop would have no effect on the outcome of this particular competition because gallop isn't listed in these three skills here. So that's why you want to be aware of which is the primary and one of the two secondaries so that you can make your fillers tailored to your needs. Um, I advise usually having a decent amount of fillers. I have a couple of hundred, possibly over a thousand, but you do sort of want to have enough that suit your needs. I mean, I would do quite a lot and I would use them quite a lot. So to have that amount means that I don't have to spend aging points on them. It means I can just, you know, use one, go to the next one, use one, go to the next one. And I don't have to spend aging points on making them older to use them again. Um, so you want to kind of take that into consideration, how many you're going to use, what competitions do you like to get wins in. But at the same time, don't limit yourself so much. You know, don't always say, I'm always going to get my wins in trot because you might go in trot one day and there's nothing for you to use or there's nothing you're to win against or things like that. So you want to have them. It's better to have 
a sort of a wider spectrum of fillers that you can fill lots of different kinds of competitions with. So those are the kind of the things you want to keep in mind. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope I didn't forget anything. If I have, I'll try and do another video to work with that. But just uh, try it out. Go into competitions with horses that you already have and try this out. Even if you're not filling for anyone or trying to get wins, just to get a feel for it and to sort of understand, you know, say, okay, I want to find 200% difficulty in, say, gallop competitions, um, just for example. So go through your horses, find one that has 200 gallop. And if you have horses that are close to 200 gallop and they've not reached it yet, you can, if you know, if you still have room to train them, do that. So... That's really the end of this video. Hope it's been helpful and hope you had a lovely day. Bye bye.